True happiness is when others are happy because of something you did. It brings about something great within you that just you know and Allah knows. When you've done something grand and great for someone who would not believe that it would come from you and you've touched their soul, there is a spirituality that beams from that good act that happens to reach the Almighty instantly and it comes back to you with that good feeling if really you did it for the sake of Allah. My brothers, my sisters, unfortunately the world has taught us that when you're looking for happiness, it's all about myself, me and I, or me, myself and I. So we want everything for ourselves, not realizing as we build ourselves singularly, we are only depressed, sad, we lose contentment and sleep because we haven't known the plan of the one who made us. If he wanted just me to be happy, he would have never ever kept reaching out to others as an act of worship that would bring about such a level that only Allah knows. And this is why he has kept the month of Ramadan every year it comes back. If he wanted, Ramadan could have been just like Hajj to say once a lifetime fast for the month or fast one year in your life. It could have been. It is not impossible for Allah. Allah speaks of Hajj. He says, every one of us, we owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Hajj, if we are able and capable, at least once in our lives, subhanAllah. If Allah wanted, He could have said the same for Ramadan. But no, He says that must come every year. If He wanted even this prayer that we have weekly, He could have had it once a month or even less. But Allah wants us to gather because the gathering has a different spirituality. Right now I'm talking to you. I feel the blessings of Allah. I feel the love and the goodness in such beautiful spiritual faces. No matter what your color, your race, your complexion, your nationality, wherever you're originally from, I feel the love, I feel the care. I feel that we are part of the ummah and the greater the challenges we are facing from outside, the closer we should become because without us becoming the true body that we are supposed to be, we're never going to achieve the goodness collectively that we're meant to be achieving. My brothers and sisters, if you don't feel the love for those with you today and around you in this beautiful Islamic center, there is something wrong with you. If you're looking for small things that divide you rather than the million things that bring you together, there is something wrong with you. If you look at a person's sin and you become such that you want to stay away from them without reaching out to them in a positive way, then there is something wrong with you because we all commit sin and we all need to remind each other. Help one another when it comes to goodness and righteousness and don't assist one another to achieve sin and that which is in transgression of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enmity and develop your relationship with Allah for indeed Allah, His punishment is very severe. We should help one another in goodness, but at the same time, there is something known as al-amr bil ma'roof, an-nahi anil munkar, to encourage people to do good and to discourage them from bad with a condition. What is that condition? In a beautiful way, with love, with care. I need help. I'm standing here in front of you, but I swear by Allah, I need help. If you're able to help me and assist me, because where I need help has been perhaps shown to you, then you can help me in a beautiful way. If I have a bad habit, I would want out of your love for me to be able to tap me on my back with a smile and say, my beloved brother, this thing here needs a little bit of attention. Please don't feel bad. I love you. I care for you. I didn't go out and spoil you or your name, but I'm just telling you X, Y, and Z that you're engaged in. Perhaps if you'd like to make it A, B, and C, it will help you and all of us as an ummah. Wow, subhanallah. What love is that? What love is that? When you want your children to grow, you will not want to expose them in a way that they become degraded and they want to turn away. They don't want to meet you and talk to you. When we are talking in the masjid, we talk with love because we want to see you here, not just next week, but for the next salah. But if I were to 
talk to you in a way that, sh- that depicts or that shows that I am the one who is perhaps sinless or perfect and you guys are all sinful, you won't be here for the next Jumu'ah. Choose another place to go. So let's learn to love each other. When Allah speaks of the people of the book, He speaks about them very respectfully. Allah speaks about the people of the book in the Quran and He tells us when you are inviting them towards the goodness and when you are talking to them, explaining to them, answering their questions, do so with tact and with wisdom in a beautiful way. When Allah speaks to the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, you're going to go to a tyrant who's calling himself a god, who is calling for people to worship him, but speak to him with soft words. My brothers and sisters, I remind you and I to develop your relationship with Allah. You'll never, you'll never ever struggle. One of the reasons why we are gathered here for, on a Friday and it brought about tears to my eyes as I was seated here thinking the reasons we are gathered is known by Allah but some of them might be disclosed to us because the feel of looking at a face and reaching out to it is very different from sitting on your phone and socializing with the entire globe. I can sit on my phone for hours on end without realizing how the time has passed. And I have achieved zero in spirituality. But when I come to the house of Allah, why does Allah want us to come together on a Friday? Why does He say when you come early, you have a greater reward? He wants you to mix with the rest of the ummah. Learn about who they are, what their problems are. You see someone crying, you see someone on crutches, you see someone on a wheelchair, you see someone calling out to Allah, crying. It should make you feel, this is my brother, this is my sister. We are one. Let's reach out to them. What do they need? And that's why we are gathered together. That's why we have a Jum'ah on a weekly basis and a Jama'ah on a daily basis. If you're a Mu'min, you believe in Jum'ah and Jama'ah. You believe on the Friday, meaning in in the Jum'ah that you need to get to. And you believe that you should be making your five daily prayers as far as possible in a small group at least. Why is it that getting in the group is 27 times more rewarding than reading your prayer alone? Because of getting together, you are going to differ. You won't like me. I might not like you for certain things, but you are my beloved brother. I cannot deny that. I love you whether you're from Somalia or Nigeria, whether you're from Australia or New Zealand, whether you're from the north or the south, or you come from the bottom of the alphabet like me from Zimbabwe. May Allah bless you all. May Allah grant you goodness. I pray whatever it is that you are going through in your individual lives that the Almighty knows and you know, may He grant ease for you. My brothers and sisters, where is the love of the ummah? We have hate and we are filled with hate and we are dividing each other from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 groups. Yes, we will have differences. It's normal the Sahaba radiallahu anhum had differences. We may discuss them but with love, with respect, with kindness, with dignity, with goodness. We want to see solution. So a center of this nature is a blessing. I want to ask you today, my brothers and sisters, a very important question. You've seen the importance, very briefly, of getting together. You've seen the importance of family days, family gatherings, gatherings of the ummah, get together, whether it is for a meal or a little retreat, or it is for perhaps a sporting event, or an academic event, or a religious event, but getting together is extremely important. It brings about goodness. When Allah promises you Jannah, Because of a deed, you need to know that deed is going to be difficult. When Allah says, you serve your parents, you'll get Jannah. You must know it's going to be almost impossible to serve your parents at a certain stage. Why? Politics between my wife and my mother, my father and myself, my brothers. That's the reason why Allah says, if you really can manage it, even with all of that, we're going to give you Jannah. When Allah says, Jannah lies at the service of your parents, if it was easy, He wouldn't have said that. Jannah doesn't come about for free. The hadith says that you know what? Allah's commodity is very expensive. It's not so easy to achieve. It's a lifetime struggle. Subhanallah. So when Allah tells you if you care for your fellow believers and if you look after them as as one body and you take care of them as though when something is hurting somewhere else, it's hurting you. You need to know that's your ticket to Jannah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's going to be very difficult. Subhanallah, it's going to be difficult. May Allah make it easy for us. Question I have for you, I still haven't asked you. If you're from Milton Keynes and you come for salah, can you put a price? How many pounds is your salah worth? That's the question. How many pounds? 
is your salah worth? You put your head on the ground for the one who made you on a beautiful carpet in a beautiful place and I'm actually here, I might have made wudu, I parked my car, I came here and subhanallah, I now am putting a value at what it was. What did I gain from this? What's the value of it? Can I tell you? If you came for Salatul Fajr and you read the two sunnah, the hadith says, Rak'ata al-fajri khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha the two units of Fajr, more valuable than the entire world and whatever it holds. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So imagine the Jumu'ah, imagine the gathering, imagine the prayers in Jama'ah that you're going to be fulfilling. Can you put a price tag on it? The answer is no. It is priceless. It is worth billions of dollars and pounds and more. That was question number one. We've answered it. Question number two. Would you be prepared to pay one pound every time you used a masjid towards that masjid? That's the question. Would you be prepared to pay one pound every time you came for salah to say, I use the carpet, I use the electricity, I use the car park, I use the water, I use the facility, I use everything that's here. Is it okay for me to remove one pound and put it into the box and say, because I used it, I don't want someone else's money to be used for my ibadah. But that's what's happening. Many of us are wealthy. Do you know someone has paid for what you're doing right now? Do you realize the carpet was paid not by you? Someone. Who? Whoever's getting a reward. Do you know the water you use to make wudu? We feel entitled to it. The, 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 the little tissue that is there. You know, the towels that are there to wipe and so on. We feel entitled. I'm part of the ummah. I can come. Yes, you are welcome. Someone's paying. Can't I think, let it be me for one week? Let it be me for one year? Let it be me for one day? Let it be me for one salah? How much electricity is being used? We don't know what the bill is. But we come in, we use it and so on. I'm sure in the cold there is beautiful heating. Someone's paying. So we've discovered that the salah is priceless. But many of us don't think about paying. That's why I'm here to tap myself. Listen, you've come here, you're parking your car there free. Before you leave, put 50 pounds in the box and move. 50 might be a lot, even 5. 5 might be a lot, even 50p. Subhanallah. What happened? I am achieving something great because I'm contributing to the ummah, even if it means with a small piece. So I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, every time you use a masjid, every time you use a facility, Make sure you've contributed towards the upkeep of that facility because you don't want to have come here ala hisabi ghayrik on the account of someone else. My brothers and sisters, it's absolutely important. This is a facility I don't know much about. I told you it looks new. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Who did it? I don't know. Whoever did it is getting a reward. And guess what? If it's not yet fully done or paid for, why don't we take out a few pounds and pay towards it because I tell you what will happen on the day of Qiyamah we will achieve the palaces that we're looking for the castles the goodness the greatness and on top of that in this world we will have that contentment we're searching about we're searching for that we spoke about a little bit earlier when I started off I said everyone's looking for happiness come to the house of Allah you get happiness you know when you have a treasure trove and you're looking for the treasure when I was a kid I used to play that and we're being told how hot or cold we are. Which means when you're cold, you're far away from it. When you're hot, you know what? You're getting to it. Very hot, you're almost there. Subhanallah, we're looking for a treasure called happiness, contentment and success. And our treasure trove, we are far from where it is, but we know where it is. If Allah loves you, He will put a love in your heart for His own house. Do you know what evidence is for that? Subhanallah. A person whose heart is hanging in the masjid, it's connected to the house of Allah. Why does Allah say, that person is my guest on the day of judgment? I will give him a special shade on the day of judgment. Do you know why? If I was close to you, if I was very close to you, after salah, we'd be having lunch at your place. Do you agree? Why? Because hey, you're my buddy. I'm close to you. I have a relationship with you. I've known you for years. If I was to go anywhere else, you'd be offended to say, hey, how could you have gone to there when you and I grew up together? Subhanallah, right? And we were actually connected with each other for years. It shows a closeness. Wallahi, when you're close to Allah, in a different way, but when you're close to Allah, 
You will be in and out of his house all the time. You'll be part of the furniture. People will know. You want to meet this man, I'm sure at Asr you're going to see him in the masjid. Subhanallah. They used to say that about the older people, our fathers and grandfathers sometimes. But we've become too busy searching for the same happiness, content and success. But somewhere else, the owner of success, where is he? In the masjid. That's where he is. Which means you will find him here. You want that success? Where do you look for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we reach Him through dua and through ibadah and through staying away from prohibitions. But getting to His house is something unique. Unique. I invite you my brothers and sisters to get to the house of Allah early. And I do appreciate that there are challenges living in this country and other countries where we are busy with work, we are busy with so many things. But alhamdulillah on a Friday, come a little bit earlier. You must be thinking, what about you? You came so late today. Subhanallah. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. If only you knew I left more than two and a half hours ago from London. But unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, I was just sitting making dhikr, hoping that perhaps the traffic will not let me so badly down that I even miss the whole time of the khutbah. And alhamdulillah, Allah blessed us all. Beginning with myself. 28 past. And I just arrived. Wallahi alhamdu wal minna. May Allah forgive all of us. And I promise you, it's just the love. It's just the love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us increase it. Learn to reach out to people. Learn to smile at people. Learn to be happy when you see success of others. That's one quality we don't have. I told you earlier, you want happiness, make someone else happy. Watch how Allah makes you happy. Watch, He will make you happy. You think you are poor. Yes, you may be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enrich you. But from what you have, if you give a small portion, 10, 20p, to someone else, and they have smiled because for them, the 20p is as good as a 200 pounder for you. Trust me, Allah will bless you with 2,000. He is the owner of success. And that's why when Allah talks of ibadah, He says something powerful. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've not created mankind and jinn kind except for them to worship me, to fulfill what I have told them and stay away from the prohibitions that I have given them. And then he says, because people might, might be thinking, wow, is that how boring life is going to be? My whole life I've just got to do what Allah wants? The answer is, you know what? You do whatever Allah says you have to do or you can do. And you stay away from what He says you should not do, believing that whatever your Maker has said you shouldn't do, if you were to do it, you would actually lose yourself before anything else. When Allah has prohibited something, it is only because of how bad it is. No other reason. If there was goodness in it, it would never be prohibited. And that's why Allah says about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that whatever he has enshrined comes from Allah whatever he told us comes from Allah and Allah says yuhillu lahum at-tayyibati wa yuharrimu alayhim al-khaba'ith wa yad'u anhum israhum wal aghlal allati kanat alayhim he has made halal that which is good and pure and he has prohibited that which is dirty and filthy and he, his mission was there in order to release us from the clutches that we have been chained by. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. So that verse of worship where Allah says I've only created mankind and jinn kind in order for them to get close to me through worship. You need to know something very interesting. Immediately after that he says... مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقَ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ I don't want any sustenance from them. I don't want anything. And I don't want them to feed me. Subhanallah. Allah is telling you it's not about money. It's not about money. In fact, immediately after that, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ In fact, it is Allah who is الرَّزَّاق, the one who's going to provide for you. What did I tell you? If you give someone, it's not about the money. They were going to live even if you didn't give them. When a beggar is asking for some coin, if I don't give the coin, 
Someone else will give the coin, but the beggar is going to survive. Trust me, with you or without you. If you don't contribute to this masjid, it's going to be there. You may come again and again. Someone else will contribute. I've lost, but I didn't realize I've lost. The only time I realize I've lost, when I'm close to Allah. Hey, someone else's money was used, not mine. Allahu Akbar, oh Allah, use my wealth too. Use it. What are you going to do with your money if you were to die now? Your bank balance, what's going to happen? Take a small portion and say, Oh Allah, if I die now, well at least I'm giving a few pounds every day so that I know today I gave a sadaqa. Today I gave a little charity. So this is why Allah says, I don't want the money from you. Someone else may give it. If your closeness to Allah makes you give, then definitely you will receive in abundance more. I want to ask you one or two more questions inshallah before we close. Every one of us here, we make prayer to Allah, supplicate dua to Allah about things we don't have. How many things has He given you that you haven't even asked for? Millions of things. You didn't even ask. You're looking at me now. Has anyone ever said, Oh Allah, give me good eyes. You already have them. You took it for granted. Have we ever said, Oh Allah, I thank you for these eyes. These eyes, subhanAllah, I can see so clearly. I thank you for them. I'm going to make sure I fulfill salah because you've given me a brain and you've given me ears and a nose and hands and whatever else. And so things we've never even asked for, we haven't even thanked Allah for. And He's just given them to us. But we complain when one thing we want, we're not getting it. That's an issue. And I want to raise a second question. That is, how was our condition 10 to 20 years ago? And how is the condition now? Don't you agree we are in a far better position than we were 15, 20, 30 years ago? Look at your fathers, sometimes your grandfathers. Where were they? What was their condition? What is your condition today? If people knew where you are today, and if you had this 30 years ago, you would be the king of your area. Do you realize this? The condition has improved, but we are ungrateful to Allah because man is greedy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us content. That's why I started off by saying happiness, success and content. It will only come when you develop your relationship with Allah. No other way. There is no chance that you are going to get happiness through money. It might give you temporary pleasure, not happiness, not contentment. So many have money, they are not happy. They are not content, they cannot sleep. You will never get happiness through sin. That adultery will not last more than a few minutes and it will bring about a temporary fake, false pleasure that is a seed of regret that will loom over you until the day you die and maybe beyond. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. It's not worth it. Not worth it. Become a pure person. Become a helpful person. Reach out to others. Learn to love more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Quran wa al-Sunnah. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihima min al-ayati wa al-hikmah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-Muslimin. Fa astaghfiruhu innahu jawadun kareem.